Well, hi there. So in this video, we're going to do lots of extra practice with comparative advantage trade, everybody's favorite topic. Let's get started. So the first part of this problem says that Karen earns $10 an hour at her job. She goes to a concert Saturday. Price was 75. She's unable to get a ticket, something, something. If she takes four hours off from her job, uh, and what's her opportunity cost? Well, if she takes four hours off, it's what she would have earned during those four hours. So we're just going to say four times the $10, which we said right here, she has as a job equals $40. And that's because that's what she gave up. Um, we would probably more likely say what you do with that 40 bucks, but without anything else, it's the $40. Uh, number two, in Italy, a automobile production, all this other stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the little comparative advantage table. We've got Italy, and then the other group is the USA. Looks like they can make autos or they can make washing machines. And because they're given input numbers here, like how many workers in um, how many workers it takes to make one automobile, this is an input problem, right? So we're spotting it by saying this is how many workers. The other way we say it is like how many how many hours, how many minutes to make one washing machine. Um, so let's see here. Uh, Italy automobile, eight workers it takes to make it. And they take three workers to make a washing machine. U.S. six workers and two. So obviously the U.S. has absolute advantage of both, right? You can see it because they can just do it faster. So we'd say USA because and then for automobiles six workers is is less than i gotta remember the alligator mouth eats the bigger number um six workers is less than eight workers which is italy's um opportunity or th that's how many it takes for them to make one which has comparative advantage for production of washing machines explained with numbers so one washing machine and now i'm going to take the inside number over which is three eighths of an automobile and for the united states one washing machine the inside number two sixth would be through one third automobile, um, one third. I know that this is like a weird fraction, like to be able to kind of know, like, is this one bigger than that one? Um, but one third is smaller than three eighths, right? Just know that kind of three ninths would be one third. And so this is going to be smaller than three eighths. Um, that means that we would say USA. And that's because one third automobile is less than three eighths of an automobile, right? Who should produce the automobiles? Well, that's the United States because they have comparative advantage in it. What's the lowest price they're going to take? One third of an automobile. Actually, sorry, who should produce automobiles is the other one. Whoops, brain fart, Italy. I knew it. Um, see, I knew I would make a mistake right there. I was going too fast. That's my own, that's my own fault. Quit slow down, gloss. Um, if the U.S. has it in washing machines, we know that Italy is going to make the other thing. So I neglected to mention that. I'm so sorry. Um, Italy has it. So we also know that Italy's lowest price that they're going to take um, for their automobiles, let's say one auto, is the inside number over. Eight over three is a weird fraction, but eight over three is the same as two and two thirds of a washing machine. Um, sorry, I did that math off to the side a little bit, but we're just taking the inside number over the outside number here again. So I'm going to say two and two thirds of a washing machine. That's the lowest price. Um, the highest price for what it's worth just to finish this off would be um, three washing machines. So they, they made somewhere in the middle that they, they would be happy. All right, let's take a look at number three, PPC computers. It looks like corn, who has comparative advantage in corn, who specialize, all that good stuff. Let's go ahead and solve this one real quick here. Ooh, there's not much space. I'm sorry. A, B, um, it looks like they can make corn. I wish they had done like slightly different abbreviations. C and C is a pain. Um, country A can make 200 computers. I'm just going to take the zeros off of these because that's a pain. Eight corn. Um, B could make five computers or they could make, what is that, four corn. And now I've got kind of some numbers I can easily work with. Who has comparative advantage in corn? Well, one corn. Um, the outside number over one fourth of a computer, one corn for country B. Outside number is one and one fourth of a computer. So obviously country A, we would say because one fourth of a C, whatever that, one fourth of a computer, I'm gonna spell that out, is less than one and one fourth of a computer, which is what uh, country B's opportunity cost is. Now, uh, number B, letter B, if each country specializes according to their comparative advantage, what will country B import? Well, we know that country A is gonna be making the corn, so that means country B is importing it, so corn. And see what's the minimum price A will accept to sell their corn to B. That's their opportunity cost. That's one fourth of a computer. 
And then last but not least, assume country B's productive capacity for corn doubles if the two countries specialize in trade, blah, 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 who will export corn, explain with numbers. So what this is saying is, is that B could make twice as much corn as they used to be able to. Um, I, I know what the answer is going to end up being, but we'll go ahead and solve this anyways just to show what happens with this one, right? So I'm going to move that just a shade. And now it says A stayed the same, so I'm going to leave them the same, 8 and 2. But now B can make twice as much corn, so instead of 4, they can make 8. They still make five of these. Um, we'd say, who has exporting corn? One C, outside number over, one fourth. Now one C, outside number, five eighths. It's still going to end up being country A, A, still. Um, but now, because one fourth of a computer is less than, what is that, five eighths of a computer. So it's still A. Um, but by a little bit less, we would say. Let's take a look at these multiple choice questions. For a lot of these multiple choice questions, it's a little helpful if you have a little piece of scratch paper off to the side. Um, I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit, but sometimes that makes this a little blurry. So we'll see how that behaves. If it wants to behave, I'm sorry. Um, Cindy and Martin both produce t-shirts. They sew 12. Cindy can sew 9. I'm not given any other information about the other things they can do. So um, I can't tell you their opportunity cost or comparative advantage. All I can know is their absolute. And if I look at it, Martin can do 12, Cindy can do 9. So that means Martin has absolute advantage, D. Number two, Brad and Amy produce uh, apple pies and ice cream based on this information. We can correctly conclude. Um, and so sometimes it's helpful to run the whole thing out. And sometimes it's helpful just to test the possibilities. Let's see. Uh, first off, we have absolute advantage making ice cream. We'll sell ice cream to Amy. I'm, I'm going to actually assume this is probably wrong, but I'm going to check it real quick here. Brad, absolute advantage making ice cream. He can make 10 um, or she can make 15. So that one's wrong. Um, absolute advantage, let's see. Brad does not have comparative advantage in either good. That can't be true either. He's got to have it in one. So I'm going to eliminate C. D, Brad has absolute advantage in making apple pies. He can make five, she can make 15. That's not true. Um, and then his cost of making ice cream is higher than Amy's. And then comparative advantage of making ice cream. So now I really am going to test this here um, very quickly with a little sketch. A and B, ice cream, apple pies. And I know that Amy can make 15 and 15. So she has like a one-to-one -one opportunity cost. And I know that Brad can make five apple pies or he can make 10 gallons of ice cream. So for him, one gallon of ice cream is equal to one half of an apple pie. Um, and then for him, one apple pie is equal to two ice creams. And so we would say Amy has it in apple pies and Brad has it in ice cream. Let's see, Brad has comparative advantage ice cream and he will sell it to Amy B. Uh, three, a farmer in country A can harvest 20 or 10, and then the other country could do the other thing. If they agree to trade, who's going to buy and sell what? So again, really quick here. And again, these are probably some of the most time-consuming problems that we do in the whole class. You're not going to get a zillion of them on a test, especially of the type where you have to do all of this work. So, so please, please, please just know this is mostly for practice. Um, you're really unlikely to get a bunch of these types of questions. Country A could do 20 wheat or 10 corn, and we'd say that B could do eight and eight. So that's a one to one again, right? One to one, one to one. And then here, their wheat is equal to one half of a corn, and one corn here is equal to two wheat. So I'd say that B has it in corn and A has it in wheat. And let's see here, country A will export wheat. That is true, and they will import corn, A. Question number four. Dana and Robin produce smoothies and pizzas in an hour. Data can make 20 or 10, blah, 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 blah. What's true? Again, it can sometimes be helpful to just eliminate choices, but I'm just going to go ahead and solve this for the sake of time here. Um, we've got Dana and we've got Robin, and they're making smoothies and pizzas. And Dana can make 20 smoothies or 10 pizzas. Robin can make 18 or 6. So one smoothie for Dana is equal to one half of a pizza. One pizza for Dana is equal to two smoothies. And then one smoothie for Robin is equal to one third of a pizza. And one pizza for Robin is equal to three smoothies. So I've got Dana with the pizzas and Robin with the smoothies. Let's see. Robin has absolute advantage of making smoothies. Um, that's not true. Robin can't make that many smoothies. And I'm going to scoot that over just a shade so you can kind of see my math. Um, 18 is less than 20. So A is wrong. B, Robin has absolute advantage and comparative advantage in pizzas. Robin does not have an absolute advantage. He, he makes six. They make 10. Dana has comparative advantage in making both smoothies and pizzas. You can't have it in both. That's not true. D, Dana has comparative advantage in pizzas, which she does. Robin has it in smoothies, which they do. D is the correct answer. Let's take a look then at using the same amount of time. Jack can do stuff, and then um, Sam can do stuff, it looks like. So real quick here. 
Jack and Sam. We're gonna make, we're making bikes and we're making computers. Jack can make 10 bikes or five computers. And Sam, you got a one-to-one -one just the same. So here you're often gonna find like a one-to-one -one relationship, which is kind of helpful because then you don't have to do as much math. For Jack, one bike is equal to one half of a computer and one computer is equal to two bikes. So that gives um, Sam it in computers and Jack in the bikes. And so let's take a look here. Sam has absolute advantage in bikes. No, he doesn't. He can only make five and Jack can make 10. So, so the A answer is incorrect. Sorry, I'm going to scoot that just a bit. B, Sam has absolute advantage in computers. No, he doesn't. They tie. C, so I'm going to cross these out. C, Sam has comparative advantage in bikes. That's not true. We already learned that Jack does. Jack has comparative advantage in bikes. D is the correct answer. Now let's take a look at number seven, Stefan and Donna. And we actually are given this here, so I don't have to do it on this page. That's kind of nice. What's the following term of trade? So this is from the second set of, of kind of notes about, about trade. And we're looking for where it's going to be in between their opportunity costs. Because I'm given a list of one canvas, I'm only going to work in the canvas column. I'm not going to mess around with this because that's a waste of time. Outside number over 40 over 30 is one and one third OJ. And then one canvas for Donna is equal to two OJ. And so I'm looking for one canvas in between these two numbers to be an acceptable term of trade. And one and a half is in between those. So D is the correct answer here. Now let's take a look at number eight, which is the following is true. For this one, first thing we notice, it's an input problem. It tells me how many hours it takes. So it's going to require a slight difference when I go to fix these, when I go to do these. Um, let's first look at uh, absolutes and just rule those out. Absolute advantage in lumber, Finland. Uh, yes, they do. Oh man, that was what a lucky thing. Cause they see they could do it in four hours. Estonia takes five. So just right there, Finland has an absolute advantage in lumber. I don't have to worry about the rest of this problem. I know that all of that, the other stuff is wrong. Um, last but not least, Art and Zed are doctors and they perform surgeries. And so I am going to do a quick little table off to the side. They make art and what's his name? Zed, Art and Zed. And they make elbow surgery and they do knee surgery. So I'm going to say KS and ES. And Art takes how many hours? Art takes two to do the knees and he can do one to do one hour to do an elbow. And then Zed takes four hours to do the knees and one hour to do the elbow. So this is an input problem, right? It's input. Remember that. Always be looking for when there's an input problem that you're going to be flipping the order of how we do these. One knee for Dr. Art is equal to two elbows because it's the inside number, the two over the one. One knee for Dr. Zed is equal to four elbows. Woo, four elbows. And so that means Dr. A is going to do the knees and we know that Dr. Z will do the elbows. So let's take a look here. Dr. Art has it in the elbows. Uh, no, he does not. Dr. Art has it in the knees. Dr. Z has it in the elbows. That's true. That's the correct answer. B, uh, thank you for playing. I'll see you next time.